Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's Bella here from Rachel Bella Crafts in her crafty studio. And um, I've just been playing. I was watching a lady called uh, Peace of Mind. And I can't remember her actual name. I think it was... Oh, I can't remember. I don't want to say the wrong name. But anyway, it was Peace of Mind, Art, Slow Stitch, and she was doing a butterfly. So... Um, I just want to show you what I've made because she so inspired me this morning. This has got nothing to do with the project that I've been working on with the slow stitch snippet. This is something I just decided to do today. And the other series will just keep coming out every Tuesday. So I hope you'll follow along with that. And um, I think there's about five videos up ready for you to watch. So I hope you'll keep up with me. And um, and I can show you the end result of the, on the sixth video. But anyway, this is something totally different. So I hope you're all well. Thank you all so much for your lovely comments. And um, I just want to say, because this will probably go out now. Um, what day is it today? Tuesday. It may go out Wednesday or Thursday. And this isn't going to be a weekly thing. I, this is just something I've decided to do today. I just wanted to uh, catch up with those comments. Um Thank you very much for your comments. I love having questions. Um, and uh, I'm trying to think who it was. It's gone out of my head. I'm so sorry. But I have answered your questions. When you're making a snippet roll, if you decide that you want to use it for clusters, then don't uh, slow stitch it unless you've pieced it out in the sizes that you want to use and cut up. You can do that. And, and think about it as you're making it. Well, I can cut that bit off. I can cut that bit off. But what I would usually do if I'm making uh, them for snippets, which I haven't done, actually. I usually just make uh, clusters, I mean. I usually just make the clusters, you know, little small ones. But it's still a good idea to do that. I would machine stitch it first. If you haven't got a, um, a machine, then do it the way I just said. But I would machine stitch it all on uh, all the the layers on first, not the slow stitching, cut up what you're going to use or even leave it on a roll and cut them off as you need it. And then you can do your slow stitching or add extra bits like a yo-yo or whatever. So things are not getting cut in half. I just wanted to say that for you to the two ladies that mentioned it on my question, on my, um, my, Number two, I think it was, part two of the uh, snippet roll. So anyway, let's get on with what we're doing. So thank you for that, and um, I hope you'll keep watching. Now I'm just looking here. That's not very level, so I'll straighten that up in a moment. Um, now this is what she did. She made a butterfly uh, out of a uh, doily, but she called it a dresser scarf. So I don't know whether that's what you call them. In, in We call them tray cloths over here, but you call them dresser scar scarves, I think. In America and she cut out individual shapes so this is what I cut out to make a butterfly and what I've done I've done a right and a left so you can just flip them over because that's the top and that's the bottom and I've got top and bottom written on there okay because you will get confused so when you're making them make them individually um, the lady suggested because they don't turn out if you try and do them double just flip it over and then you will get your shape on the other side. So it's, you know, like a mirror image and whatever shape is different there, will it'll mirror image that over there. So I hope you'll understand that. And I'll turn this over and I'll show you what I've done. So this is what she inspired me to make this morning. I know it looks a bit of a strange thing, but I'll, I, I wanted to make a little um, slow stitch book uh, for myself. And this is what I thought I would do. Now, this is the remainder of the dress. I'm getting some use out of this dress. Um, I cut up the butterflies. I put the butterfly on here, not the butterfly. I put the uh, template on here, pinned it on, cut around, turned it over, and then did it in another place where I felt I wanted the flowers to be. You can put it on plain material. You can put it on... Fancy material, depends what you want to make your butterflies out of. Okay, and I'll show you what I've done here. So let me get my scissors. So this I've cut out with the dress. I have used this bit of lining to put it underneath to give it a little bit of substance. Okay, it's not perfect, 
but I don't care. I'm not bothered. And I've stitched with my sewing machine, stitched them on there, pinned them on. In fact, I've left a pin in there. I didn't even know. Oh, no, I've left that there. I'll tell you why that's there in a minute. Get myself confused now. I put a piece of lace. Um, what did I do with that lace? I could have shown, excuse me, stretching. It's right at the back. Piece of this. So anything like this with circles or anything um, that you could use for the body, um, depending on what colours you're using, choose it accordingly. And then I put a button on here. I think I might have screen. I put a button on here and then I've um, used my friction pen, which is this. And I bought a pack of them. Okay. And I've ironed it off. I, the, the ink comes off when you iron it. So I've just done that now. That's why my mat is here. So that's what I've done on there. Okay. And then, as I say, I stitched around down here as well. I've sewn the button on and I thought I'd use a two, two eye button for the eyes. And there's the antennas there. So what this is on canvas, by the way. And it's, it's quite firm. All right. So what I thought I would, would do, because it was a little bit misshapen down here, I wanted to tidy it up a little bit. So I have cut out some of this same, and I think I noticed the other side, that was a little bit too high. Some of the same lace that I used from there, and I put it at the bottom to tidy it all up, like so. And this material I have used before on one of my covers, and I think it was the prayer journal, which is absolutely beautiful. Just curtains I bought from the um, charity shop. I think that's about right. That's, that's gone down too far now. And I fussy, never mind. Plays the eye up otherwise. There we go. And I was just going to machine it, and I thought, ooh, I wonder if they would like to see what I've been making. So make your templates, use only two, and then put right on there, right left and then you should be okay and if you want to go and see her video to see how she's done it because she's a sweet lady peace of mind art slow stitch butterfly that's that's the bit there all right excuse the scroll of the writing let me put that away now and i was just going to get um i was just thinking about why don't i stitch the pocket on as well at the same time and that's what I'm going to do. So that's not absolutely straight, but you're not going to see. I could trim it up, but I'm not going to bother. I, I think, you know, sometimes we can be just too, we can fuss too much, can't we? And I'll just pin this. And then we'll whiz around there with the sewing machine. And that's a cover made. These mats are wonderful because you could just poke them through without damaging your mat. My pink mat, I'm thinking. So there we are, that's on there. And hopefully that will stay down. That's that. And I'm just going to do a zigzag stitch all the way around. Okay, so let's get my sewing machine across and we can do that together. Throw that over there. Now, I'm going to lift you up a little bit, so I hope it don't make you sick. And point you over there a little bit. And then hopefully you'll be able to see, see what I'm doing. All right. So I usually start in the middle so that when you close the spine, then you don't get that showing on the inside. So I'm going to do it up here in zigzag, which I'm, I'm going to do a big zigzag, I think. So hopefully I won't go off now. And um, the only problem I'm with me doing it this way, I just noticed I got my pins going the wrong way. So excuse me while I change my pin around. You got to think about these things when you're using a sewing machine. Otherwise you won't be able to get them out. Okay. It's because I'm right handed, look. That's it. Um, just check now. Now then, I've moved that a little bit. So just keep checking everything. I've told you this before. Thank you. 
things will move. Being really awkward now doing this, aren't I? Anyway, there we are, we're sorted. So once you've got your needle on, um, there we go. If I move it over slightly, you might be able to see better. Get your needle up, pull your threads to the back. Just put that in that little hook. Always seems to come out that one, doesn't it? But there we go. And I'm going to go up the top part. So I'm not interfering with this. Now I can take out, always put your needle down, ready. Okay, and here we go. Oh, I'm starting on the end now, but it doesn't matter. I've started now. Sorry, some noisy. There we go, take your pins out as you go along. I just want to check now where my pocket is. That seems to be okay. Turn it around. I take that needle out, pin out a moment, because the end bit might catch in my machine. So I'll just make sure that's straight. Not worried about this bit here. Worried about anything fussy. See that's staying down nicely. Pray to look now at the back. <laughs> That ends okay. Yeah, that looks fine actually. Let's keep going. I think I just missed the antenna. Excellent. Take that pin out now. And I think I'll take, no, I won't take that one out yet because that's a bit in the middle. I will cut these strands though because sometimes they get underneath and catch. So let's get them out the way. There we go. There we go. Job done. Hopefully. Hopefully everything is fine. Get that out the way a moment. Turn that off. I hope it's not too dark in here for you because... Sorry about that. But because... Um... Our electricity has gone up to such an extent. I know you'll laugh when I say this. So I'm trying to save um, my husband worrying. So I've just got one lamp on. I'm going to t I'm testing it to see whether I can get away with just the one lamp. Now, what I could do there, I could either just go straight up there and stitch that or just leave it. Or I could just put a little bit of glue under there. So there we are. There's my... Um, now I've got my, oh, they've gone over there now, I'll just use these. I'll just trim that off. It's nice. There we go. Keep those little bits. <laughs> so there we are. Job done. And there's a little cover. What do you think of that? Isn't she sweet? So then what I'll do, I will find all my lovely bits of, um, in fact, I'm going to stop the camera now because we may as well finish the job off and I'll go and find all my bits. There's the back. And the nice thing about this is if you wanted to add anything to it, you could. Or I'm just going to make it lacy inside, I think. So that's that's how she's looking. 
what I could have done there if I'd thought about it, and I've only just thought about it, but I could still stitch it on by hand, is um, I could have added, not this one particularly, but I could have tidied that up with, with a nice bit of lace there and stitched it first. So you want to think about that, but I was in a hurry to get it done, wasn't I? So, And this here is absolutely gorgeous. That would have been lovely on there. And what I could still do, actually, I could hand stitch that because I can get in there, look. But of course we got blue or green, so I'm not, I'm not sure. If that had been green, that would have been perfect. That would have been lovely. But I'm not going to use that. I'll see what else I've got. So I shall be back soon. Hello, it's me. I'm back. Um... As I was getting all my bits ready and I've just ironed them all on my little grey mat, um, I was just thinking about what I should do and what I should make up my pages with. And uh, the lady that I usually watch with Slow Stitching as well as Roxy Creations is a lady called Caterina Giglio. And there's her name there. All right. So if you want to go over, and especially if you're interested in sewing, especially if you're interested in dyeing um, material, or any kind of artwork because she is a you know a well-known artist in her own right and she puts her work into galleries and she sells all her work online so beautiful pieces all pieced together usually with uh either little bits of uh material like this or like this and uh it's wonderful it's absolutely wonderful so go over and see katarina tell you i've sent you over and Lita, L-I-T-A, because she knows me as my 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 own name, which is Angelita. So she knows me as Lita, L-I-T-A. All right, so tell her I, I've sent you across, will you? Um, so here we are. We've got our lovely bits of material, all nicely ironed. And I'm just trying to decide which bits I want to use. So I'm just showing you what I've got. And for the slow stitch box that Katerina makes, she puts all these lovely ragged edges in absolutely wonderful if you like that if you're fussy and you like everything pristine then don't go and watch because it, it, it's all very arty and very very beautiful absolutely beautiful what she does and she makes them in, into pictures and she also makes these lovely books which i i absolutely love and what i would do with that would just fold it in half and that would go in my book because here's my book here underneath all this I would have to trim it off. I was hoping that would work because I don't really want this edging on. So I can I can cut that off now. I've got my best scissors out. Look. <laughs> so I only use these for material, nothing else. I'm going to rip it away from the camera. Um, so that would be just the job there. And they don't need to be the same size. Just as if you were doing your book. I can rearrange them afterwards. Um, I'm just going to choose a couple now while, while we're here. She uses beautiful tray cloths and they're usually stiff. I haven't stiffened this one yet. It is fairly stiff in its own right. And I'm trying to decide whether I would put the edging on the bottom of it, like so, to, to marry up with this going on here, or whether that's too much, and whether I would just put put it like that. So I'm trying to consider what to do, what's the best. Or I could even just do it, I think actually I'm going to do it like that. And I can tidy up that edge um, with a rotary cutter or something. So I think I may use that one like that and I'll have my two edges. I wonder what that would look like flipped over. Oh, that'd be rather nice, wouldn't it? It does poke out just a little bit more than I would have liked. So I don't know. Maybe I just need the, the raw edge like this. I'm going to think about that one just for a moment. So that's that one. Now there's an, a, a smaller piece and I would like to cut off this end bit here. And I'm going to keep these end bits because you'll see why when we go along. All right, so I'm putting that on there for now, but I will be putting white in between them. So they're not all going to be the same color. This is a beautiful piece that had all embroidery at the top, which was quite very old fashioned and wasn't my cup of tea. So I just cut this bit off here. Uh, I don't know whether you're aware of this, but um, we're not supposed to cut 
cotton with our fabric scissors. I don't know whether you've ever heard of that, but that's what I was taught. So that's what I'm doing. I'm not cutting it with... Um... Now this, I don't think will tear. So I'm just going to cut off that selvage. Or shall I keep it? Wait a minute. It's a pity it's so long, isn't it? What about that way? And then we can attach a piece on. Because what Katerina does, she attaches pieces on the end there. So we could have a straight piece there, a ragged piece there, and then perhaps either that on the end there attached to it. And she slow stitches it on and it's absolutely gorgeous. So, um, and this bit here, oh gosh, that's wonderful. And that could be stitched on there somewhere or even, you know, oh look, there's blue in there as well. Gosh, you never know what you're gonna find in these old materials, do you? But there we are. So, I, but I did want something which, which was a bit of a funny shape. Um, so to marry that up there and or even and the other thing that she does, she has it all flopping out like this and it looks absolutely stunning. So I'm just showing you what you can do. And I'm just layering these up. I've got some plain material here that will make just ordinary pages for us to put our lace on top of. These are the other bits that I've um, coffee dyed, and I know they're coffee because I can smell them, but this is for me, so I, I don't mind that. Now that could go in the book as it is, as a page. And I've uh, coffee dyed this one. These lovely, so that's darker on the one side, but look at these, aren't they absolutely gorgeous? And you could stitch around there and make lovely shapes. Go over and watch what Katarina does. I'm going to go over and watch her again to refresh myself. And we add these onto our pages. So let me just show you the rest. And I'm going to mix the white in with these as best I can. But I absolutely love these. So that could either go on the end of one of these or even on the end of one like this I could I can make these raw edges and attach because that is stunning or you could even make a pocket with it that'd be nice wouldn't it if we made pockets with them or even put those down I might keep that piece actually to go in my art journal so anyway there's some ideas and I'll come back um when I've cut it all out and possibly show you then on the weekend how it's coming along so look after yourselves and take care and I'm going to carry on now cutting it out because that's going to be quite involved. And I'll show you all the pieces later in the week. Bye for now. Take care.